Alright guys, so I've been questing on the Alpha recently, and there's something I came across that is pretty shocking in regards to Gahoon. But before we start this video, I do have to warn you that this video will contain pretty significant spoilers to Battle for Azeroth. So if you don't want to be spoiled, go ahead and hop off of this video and I will see you next time. But to those of you guys who are staying, let's go ahead and get the ball rolling. So, throughout Nazmir, we're introduced to the threat of the Blood Trolls and Cahoon. How they're attacking other troll settlements, defiling sacred Loa grounds, and even attacking other Loa themselves. Things are looking pretty bad as you make your way through the zone, and they get even worse when you meet this guy. Now, this guy was originally thought to be just an old statue, an old relic that is of no use to anyone, not even alive. And it isn't until after we assist Kragwa, the frog loa, that Princess Talanji, the Zandalari princess, tells us that something is off about the statue. When we go to investigate the statue, we discover that it is no ordinary statue at all, but in fact, a titan keeper by the name of Hezrul. Now, why is there a titan keeper in the area? We don't really know yet. What we do know, however, is that the neighboring lands are riddled with corruption, ranging from undead origin to blood trolls and to even the void. This corruption is most present in the grounds of what appears to be a Titan Forge containment temple, which is now rendered disabled. Also, there are other keepers stationed within this area that are malfunctioning. However, they still can sense the corruption within the lands. The only problem is that they attribute that corruption to you and attack you on sight. The only option is for you to put these keepers down and take their cores and bring them back to Hezrul, who will then use these components to repair his own system. He also asks you in the meantime to purge the nearby grounds of any corruption, which includes undead amalgamations as well as even faceless ones who are in the midst of a summoning ritual. Overlord Craxus, a minion of the old gods, is who they manage to summon, and while fighting him, he makes note that Gahoon will be free soon and ravage Zuldazar, with us being helpless to stop it. After you defeat Craxus, Talanji and Hezrul arrive, and it's at this minute where you receive a placeholder cutscene from Hezrul. In this cutscene, you finally get an eye-opener on what Gahoon is. Hezreal reveals that Cahoon isn't just some ordinary blood god, he is actually an old god. The fifth old god, not mentioned in the Chronicle, but hey, I guess he's mentioned now. Gahoon is the reason the Blood Trolls are assaulting the other Loa and the Zandalari. With the destruction of Zuldazar, Gahoon will be freed from his containment, thereby unleashing chaos. The only way to prevent this is to, in ambiguous terms, protect Zuldazar, which seems much easier said than done. However, it's also at this moment where the leader of the Blood Trolls, Grandmother Antina, arrives and attacks Hezreal, greatly wounding him. It's now up to us and the princess to protect Hezrul, which we managed to do by forcing Antina to retreat. With this knowledge now in our minds, we return to our camp where we begin plans on assaulting Zul Nazman, the heart of the Blood Trolls and their fortifications. With the help of the Gob Squad, a group of goblins who specialize in missions such as these, we make our way to Zul Nazman, where we learn that the Blood Trolls are in the works of building a construct which is saturated with blood magic that they plan on unleashing on Zuldazar. We quickly learn that the construct is immune to physical damage, such as the cannon fire from the Gob Squad's powerful cannon, since it is protected by Antina's blood magic. The mission from this point is pretty much clear. We need to kill Antina in order to destroy the construct, thereby weakening the blood trolls greatly by delaying their plans and leaving them leaderless. And that is exactly what we do. We rush through the village and with the assistance of the Loa, we kill off dozens of blood trolls and Antina's lieutenants until we finally make our way to her. Once there, we engage her once again in combat and kill her, leaving the construct vulnerable. The Gob Squad then uses their powerful machinery to take down the construct before it is unleashed and before it is able to be used to free Cahoon from his prison. Although we deal the Blood Trolls a massive blow here, we'd be we'd be huge fools to assume that this is all over so quick and so soon. In the past, Talanji's father was quick to dismiss the possible threat of the Blood Trolls, which has allowed them to build up their power unsupervised, which has led to all of this trouble to begin with. Talanji will not make the same mistake. So what do you guys think? So far, I will say that the questing in Battle for Azeroth, at least in Nazmir, has a much more captivating storyline than possibly any zone in Legion. It dives headfirst into the issue with the Blood Trolls and better yet, reveals that the being they serve is an old god. I love me my old gods. I feel like we've been saturated with so much green and fell lately that it's been about damn time that we started seeing some void and I'm pretty impressed that they exposed us to Cahoon's origin 
legends as well as the threat of an old god so early into the expansion. Thanks so much for watching this video guys, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos like this in the future and until next time I will see you all later.